Let's jump into the first chapter that we have here. Samprayogic. This chapter contains a list on how to attain pleasure during sex. And one thing, the little bit reading that we tried doing on this chapter was that there are, there's this whole thing about the three genitalias that men and women have. There's bell, ghoda, khargosh, and then there is ghodi, hatini, and hirni. Um, and this whole thing about how different sizes require different positions to attain pleasure and there's something for every size there. Uh, tell us more about, is there anything interesting that we should learn from this chapter? Absolutely. So, you know, again, it's something that we don't talk about. We always say, does size matter? And you say, no, size doesn't matter. Meaning that if 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 a guy is very, very small, that no, that won't matter because it's what you do with it that matters. The Kamsutra, of course, one, it's written at a time where he wasn't having to be politically correct. So he could say certain things. But he says, very interestingly, that the anatomy is made in a certain way. So both men and women have different physical characteristics. So men are measured um, with, their, with the width of the fingers. Three fingers, six fingers, nine fingers. Okay. Women, he says, have different uh, sizes of vagina, vulva, etc. But it's a more mobile organ. So it's difficult to measure it. Take it at its most basic. He says that if you're going to have sex, it should be totally fabulous. It should be pleasurable. If it isn't, don't bother. Now, one of the first things to make sex really pleasurable is that the sexual organs of both partners should synchronize in size. If the woman is very, very large, the man is very, very small, it's not going to lead to friction. There's no pleasure. If the woman is very tight, the man is huge, it's going to lead to more pain than pleasure. So the idea is that the sizes should synchronize. But literally, that's the one thing you can't do where you say, Acha, I'm sending a rishta and <laughs> can you tell me what is the size? You know, that literally is not something that you can ask for. So the positions were created to help people synchronize their sizes. If, for instance, the woman was big and the man is much smaller, then he recommends uh, positions where the woman is lying on her side, her legs, the moment, you know, you have your thighs one on top of the other, the vagina becomes a little bit tighter. It becomes a bit smaller anyway. And then it goes on to explain that if the man is really thin, then this is the kind of position that would work. If you are much smaller, then this is the kind of position it, that could work and so on. If you are very tight as the woman and the man is much larger, then the ideal positions are where the woman is on her back, legs wide open. But even there, you know, it's not as straightforward as, okay, yeah, legs wide open, go for it, put a pillow underneath. So he says, take the pillow out from under your head, put a pillow under your bottom, because that changes the angle of penetration and makes things different. But it actually goes on. It's the nuances, Saloni. It says, you have to make sure that the position has to be done in a way that there is enough room for both of them to pull back because the woman is very tiny and very tight, it is seriously scary for her to think that this really large organ is going to penetrate her and be maybe very painful. She needs to be in control. Mm -hmm. So the positions are then created to make sure that there's enough space in case there is a problem for both to be able to pull back individually. That is what we have lost because all you do is now you get a Kam Sutra. People say to me, how do I pick the right one to read? I always say, pick the one that doesn't have pictures. Those pictures are useless. All it shows you is a tangle of limbs. It doesn't explain what you're supposed to be doing to make sure that it will work. I definitely take this back from what I've heard, that Kam Sutra is more about the act of pleasure and seduction than the act of sex. Absolutely. You know, it doesn't mention thrusting. It doesn't mention the, um, like the Chinese um, literature on, you know, similar Chinese literature will tell you how many times a man must thrust for him to be counted as a good lover. Incidentally, in case anybody is wondering, four to 5,000 thrusts. 
let me tell you, no woman wants that, okay? That is a typical male idea of what you think the macho lover should be doing. It isn't a woman's idea of pleasure. The Chinese literature will tell you um, what the semen should sound like when it comes out. So if you are this excited and you get this much semen, then it should sound like a whisper. If there is this much semen, I mean, and if you're very excited and there's lots of semen, it should sound like a storm at, uh, storm at sea. Like, I'm sorry, but it's, <laughs> it's the mind boggles, right? Mind boggles, um, absolutely. So the, the Kam Sutra does not talk about any of this. It literally says, focus on pleasure. And sometimes it says, you know, you could be doing this for hours, but that's okay. Okay, so let's spend more time and learn more from you and from Kamsutra around the art of seduction.